This is Susanna Magenheimer, Random Artist 222. Welcome to our favorites mixed media YouTube Hop 2019, the Art Journaling Edition. We have a bunch of amazing prizes from a bunch of amazing sponsors, one of them being me, hosted by Alexa Dobler, who's done a wonderful job pulling together this group of creatives for your inspiration. So let's start with what I've chosen as my favorites, in this case, adhesives. It's kind of my crafting unicorn, as I'm always looking for the best adhesive for the different tasks that I'm doing. So not in any particular order, these are my must-have favorite adhesives. Let's start with the Tombow Mono Dots Adhesive Runner. I love that it has the little cap, um, it has easy application, the, the handle's ergonomic, these little dots are super adhesive, you can rub them off before you commit to it a little bit, and um, definitely a must-have. My next favorite glue is Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. It's a great glue, it dries quickly, and it's very strong. I like that it has a squatty end for wider applications, as well as a pointy end for more delicate applications. As you can see in this frame, I can go into the tiniest of spots and have a really good gluing experience. I also fell in love with Prima's Planner Glue Pen this year. It's a gel-based glue, and it has a colored tip, but it dries clear. It is super strong. It's like liquid glue in a pen shape. And it also allows for e easy applications, as you can see on something like this delicate frame. I'm also a fan of Aileen's Super Tacky Glue. It's a supreme glue, dries very quick, very strong. Love it. Another of my must-haves is Glossy Accents from Ranger. Really good for tacking um, heavier items together. And then my go-to must-haves are Liquitex Matte Medium as well as the Crafters Workshop Matte Gel Medium. The difference is one is liquid and one is more gel-based. So it depends on the application, the paper you're using, etc. So that being said, let's get on to my hot project. First of all, this is not a Halloween page, even though it looks like some of the elements are. This is about letting go of some of the dark parts of your ego to move forward, to grow, and allow good things to come into one's life. What I've done is torn a bunch of pa papers from the new Die Cuts with a View Ghost Stories paper pad collection with the idea that I want a mirror in the middle as a focal piece and I've also went ahead and stamped crackle onto deli paper that I will incorporate into my piece as well, as you see here. I've also used archival ink because that's the best ink. It doesn't um, run when you add medium to it. Once I set up these papers in the way I want it done and looking, I go ahead and use a camera and I take a picture. And then I use that as a blueprint to recreate my um, page what I'm doing now is gluing down with matte medium all my papers. I like gluing on both sides. It creates an, like a suction effect and um, seals the paper really well when you paste it down. By using matte medium, it creates a surface that allows me to add different medium layers later on, and I am able to keep working on them. So everything you see me using here today, I bought because I truly enjoy using these products. Some of my favorite things is from this company, Retro Cafe Art. Um, I love the owner. I love the laser cut range that she has. I love that each of her um, die cuts comes in several options, um, like the stencil board that you see here. It's really thin, but it's very sturdy, and it's also got some flexibility to it. But it's somewhere between chipboard and paper, and I love it. Um, She also makes um, her products in a chipboard as well as a wood veneer that's I think about an eighth of an inch but really sturdy. Um, I should add that these are all her own designs and that she is definitely one of my favorite favorite companies to um, buy from. So now to create the mirror. 
What you're seeing here on the right is the frame, and I used black gesso from the Crafters Workshop to apply it. Definitely one of my favorite products. I don't use black paint anymore because the black gesso from Crafters Workshop is like one coat, no streaking, absolute, absolute favorite product of mine. So I'm now going to apply Nouveau Expanding Mousse. What it is is a medium that allows you to create puff. The thicker the layer, the greater the puffy effect. If you put a really thin layer, you will not get a puff effect. So that's what you're seeing me do here is apply it with my fingers because I want different levels of um, dimension. And as you can see here, I am um, pointing to where I'm getting some of those more chunky areas where I want it a little more chunkier to get that um, dimensional effect happening so that I know when I hit it with my heat gun, um, I'll get the puff that I'm looking for. I want it irregular. I want it to look grungy. As you notice, I have a thick board underneath as my silicone mat is glued down and I don't want that bubbling back up. So now you can see here the after effects. Look how gorgeous this is. I mean, total chunky, rustic, grungy gorgeousness. I'm just in love with this product. It comes in several colors and I'm hoping that Nouveau makes more. <laughs> and as you can see, the mirror fits nicely inside. So now I'm using Archival Ink, my favorite, one of my favorites, because um, it's a great color range and it doesn't um, move once you start applying it with other mediums. I'm trying to create an antique effect here because this is going to be a piece behind my focal mirror image and I want to create some um, statement there. Now I'm gluing down these skulls that I fussy cut and you'll notice that there are words on there and the words there reflect the theme of the piece, which is elements in your ego that you want to diminish so that you can allow things to come into your life that are good. So now I'm using another one of my favorites, Liquitex Light Modeling Paste. So I chose a stencil that went with a the theme and I have a piece of paper there because I like to bring my modeling paste from off a page onto a stencil. Um, I also wanted to make sure that these harsh edges became more organic so I used my spatula to smoosh them down a bit and create that effect. I usually push my initial background back with gesso so all that paper detail goes away in essence and leaves the essence of the paper. Well, I forgot to do that and it bugged me. So I resolved that by using another of my favorites, Paper RC Fresco Paints in Butter. It, gave, it will give the paper an antiqued paper vibe. Um, here's a little sample so you can see um, their cheesecake versus their butter and I just felt the butter was more antiquish and it looks more less yellowy in person than it does on the video. Check out that deli paper in the background, how it changes based on what's behind it. It's just gorgeous. I'm now going to use Golden's Acrylic Glazing Liquid Satin versus the gloss to create my own fluid acrylic paint. It's basically a one-to-one -one ratio that I found works for me. And what I'm going to be doing is um, mixing them together and then applying them with a baby wipe and to thin it out as I apply it. And I'll be using my finger to um, actually apply the paint, paint to the paper to knock it back. There's my baby wipe. Here I go. Ah, I bet you all were waiting for that one. But ta-da! Nothing on the paper. Crisis averted. Because I sealed this with gel medium, it's going to allow me to apply the paint and then thin it back with the baby wipe and add more layers um, because of doing that. Um, I'm actually really thrilled how this came out because those background papers, in a sense, get knocked back. They're not as um, prominent, and um, I like the fact that it came out with an antiquing effect, which wasn't something I was planning. So I've glued some of the other parts down 
and remember to click your caps so you don't dry out your paints. I'm now adding quinacridone nickel azo gold to create a stained rust effect, which I felt was um, in keeping with the theme of um, letting go of um, the darker parts of one's ego and um, moving forward. Always make sure to make sure that your modeling paste dries out before you apply the paint. I'm now using metallic wax in aged brass to create a um, rusted stone effect. And by the way, I applied water to create that, um, that drippage. I'm now gluing on the remainder of my images that I want to incorporate behind the frame. Gluing down the frame with the Prima Planner glue pen. And I'm adding um, some Prima wax in um, Firebird to, um, to kind of bring those colors together because they're similar. They have that rusted effect. And I'm going to just highlight them really quickly and connect all the colors. And then I'm going to go through um, at the end and highlight with a charcoal pencil to add more dimension, which you'll see in the final product. And um, out of my sentiment, I added a little bit more rust stains to um, balance out the piece. And there you have it. Release your ego. I liked using the ghost as representing the release of the darker parts of one's ego. And then I wrote here like hate, greed, anger, arrogance, vanity, um, as representing those darker parts of our egos that if we'd learn to release that, maybe we'd allow good things to come into our lives. I hope this inspired you. And remember, before you head off to the next person in the hop list listed below, Remember to subscribe, like, and comment on each video in the hop in order to be eligible. A huge thanks to the generosity of all our sponsors and a special shout out to Alexa Dobler for coordinating this event. This is my prize package for one lucky winner. Thanks so much and have a great day.